it's really about knowing the rhythm that the customer wants. And again, asking them, how often do you want to meet? What should we be covering during these meetings? Are you looking at your dashboard? What types of supporting materials do we need to be providing to you? How much do you want to do? How much do you want us to do? It's really kind of setting the tone. And once you've got that base in place, um, then it's taking it to the next level every time. So I believe that my team has contributed to the success of our clients by uh, just being very knowledgeable, being agile to their needs, and also continuously improving our processes and um, our operations. And I think that that just provides an ease of mind to our clients. I think that amongst all of the things that they have to um, do on a daily basis, it just allows us uh, to provide that. That is just one less thing that they have to worry about. There's a lot of direct client engagement that happens in operational excellence where we're working with an account team and a client directly to look at a process that maybe has created some pain or is ripe for opportunity. Um, and we're carrying through with them that journey, right? Looking at what is the current state? How do we define what some of those potential pain points are? And how do we solution for, for something that not only makes sense for the customer, but also for us as an operating group so we can continually execute on them? The industry has really evolved and has really stretched our teams and, and forced them to really think outside the box. Um, a lot of times it comes in late or long hours and, and the teams just know that they're there to support the customer. I'm not sure what state he was in, but it was cold. He calls, he's like, hey, you know, I'm, I like myself out of the vehicle. Um, I'm outside of school, the school doesn't let me in. I, you know, I, I told him that I was just working at your school and he was stressed, you know, because obviously he's cold, he's locked out of his vehicle. He was just working inside the school and now the school's not letting him in. And we tried calling the police, you know, to get assistance. We got him an Uber. We just need you to stay there with him, let him be in your car. Um, you know, we'll pay for the time. And I mean, the driver was very thankful. He was like, you know, I'm out. he was about to freeze, he said. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, the lockout person came, showed up and everything worked out well. So one of the main areas that we help our customers with is cost reduction initiatives. And a few years ago, especially as times were getting a little bit tighter and there's a little bit more constrained capital, we were working with our customers to understand how could they reduce their cost footprint. And so we had one customer in particular that had a mandate from their corporate parent that they had to reduce fleet costs by 10%. And fleet is made up of a number of variable costs like fuel and maintenance. You can't just stop buying fuel. You can't just stop maintaining your vehicles. So we had to come up with a number of creative solutions that we could implement with that customer to make sure that we did not long-term impact the success of their fleet, but short-term meet the corporate demands of cutting their costs down. So coming up with creative ways in order to acquire new vehicles, in order to put those vehicles into service, and ways that they could cycle out of certain types of vehicles to make sure that they maximize the returns on those vehicles and meet those corporate initiatives while continuing to have a long-term stable fleet success strategy.